All right, how de ho neighborinos. We're here today for week three of the UPA. This is going up late. I'm sorry, I've been sick and hung over and honestly just pretty fucking lazy about the whole thing. But we're going up today, day late, and then tomorrow we'll have the PAC draft analysis going up. And uh, that'll be pretty neat, so check that out. We got another league coming. Did the thing immediately where I said I'm joining one league and now I'm in three. I don't know what the fuck's happening, but uh, using the matchup on the screen, we're going up against Hayes. Hayes is a real cool guy, another southern boy, uh, you know. Pretty neat. We got Texas versus Louisiana going on. He has the, uh, you can see his team, it's nine guys. But he has Terra Great Tusk with the Steel type and the Ground type. And then Terra De Dunsparce with the Fairy type and the Normal type. So, looking at this team, there's a couple kind of ways I could have gone about it, but I felt like the most efficient way was to set up around one certain Pokemon that seems to do very well versus his team, and then, uh, Kind of just support it with the rest of the team. Now, uh, that Pokemon is Fluttermane. Burton here, young Tim, with the booster energy, Subcall Mind. Subcall Mind absolutely 6 this man. Like, he does not beat it. with the boot. If I'm if you can't outpace uh, me with Scarf uh, Goldengo or Scarf Hydreigon, he can't uh, Sucker Punch me if I have Sub. If As long as I stay healthy enough to keep one more Sub for a Sucker Punch, I should straight up 6-0 this guy. Like, you know... It should go, He did, there's nothing, aside from like a Sash Glamora that crits me, or like, I don't even think there's any other priority on this team. It'd have to be Sash, it'd have to be Sash Glamora, or outplayed by Sucker Punch, you know, or like a crit. But other than that, it just straight up wins. Uh, this guy goes so incredibly in. Who needs a Terra type, dude? Just click dual stab, get behind the sub, calm mind up, it looks like a good time. So, next we have our uh, Heavy Duty Boots, Dragon Dance, Terror Blast, Crunch, Earthquake, Boy here, Roaring Moon. Uh, flying Coverage looks pretty good versus it. Like, Flying plus Ground plus Dark just kind of nukes everything. There's just so much, so much damage to be done, you know? And we got the Boots so that once we become a Flying type, we don't necessarily need to worry about the, uh, you know, uh, the Rocks and whatnot. Because he does have a Glamora. He's got a great Tusk. Rocks are probably... Rocks or Spikes or T-Spikes are probably going up. You know, there's not much I can really do about that. But uh, that's Roar XD, the Roaring Moon. Next, we have Bernadette, who I put in the wrong order down here. But we got Bernadette with the Heavy Duty Boots, Swords Dance, Bitter Blade, Will-O-Wisp, and Shadow Sneak. Uh, just enough HP to live... Uh, I forget what exact hit from Cinderace, but I mocked Jay for this. Shout out JV. He's a homie. He almost 6 0 me with a Swords Dance Cinderace, and I was like, all right, we're going to make sure... That I can live, uh, I think it was plus two acrobatics from fucking, <laughs> from, uh, from Cinderace. So we got just enough HP to live that, the rest just slapped into attack. You know, pretty, pretty standard stuff. Next we got Jeremiah, the Grafii, girl you know, I, 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 with, uh, Parting Shot, Knock Off, Super Fang, and Taunt. Just Spud FSL, something to help check Goldengo, can knock off stuff on the way out, can Super Fang stuff on the way in. Taunt, parting shot, you know how it goes. Pretty again, pretty standard stuff. Just more support for uh Burton over there. Then we got Choice Bandit Scizor, Bullet Punch, U Turn Thief, and Aerial Ace. Now obviously, you know I got to tell you guys, this is a post battle team builder. One thing I will say, no spoily boys, but I should have had another coverage move on this guy. It was this might be a bit of an issue, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm missing a certain coverage move, which would have been extremely helpful, but what are you going to do, you know? Then, last but not least, we have the Cilium Totoscruel. I'm not going to, I'm not going to wonder about speed tiers this time. I finally learned my lesson, dude. I got, I got too silly. Look, I'll be the first guy to say it, except for all the people in the comment section. I got too silly, you know? Spikes, Gleam, Earth Power, and Energy Ball. It actually offensively does really well versus him. Um, I don't really need a spinner. Like, I don't really need a spinner. I got boots on stuff. I'll be okay. I got taunt. So, spikes three attacks. It kind of just claims a kill. You know what I mean? As long as I attack what's in front of me, I should straight up just claim a kill. So, that's going to be that. And we're E-belt too, so that's a little bit more of a boost to make up for its 80 base special attack, which is fucking nothing. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the team builder. I'll see you guys in the battle versus Hayes. All right, here we are at the battle versus Hayes. The man's got a scary team. We see he's got Cinderace, uh, Great Tusk, Dun Dun, the Dun Sparse, 
uh, Hydra, Handy Boy, and Glamora. So, um, I could see a Glamora lead from him. That probably wouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, I think I just lead Scizor. That way, if he does lead Cinderace, I always have Bernadette to go into. Get a little, uh, little flash fire action if we want, you know? And, yeah, that way I can get, get two early BPs off on Glamora. If he leads hands, I U-turn, Dunsparce, U-turn, uh, Tusk, I probably just U-turn. Yeah. So what do we see? No, oh, no Goldango, which is insane. No Slowbro and no Jump Bluff. Okay. Noted. We're Bandit Scizor, I'm just leading it. We just, we simply lead it, you know? Got bangers in the ear, as usual. <laughs> My dude just looks so high. <laughs> is that he gonna leave the thing, which is the Glamora? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna bolt punch. We simply bullet punch. You can set up rocks, you can fucking... You can do whatever you need to do. He can set up rocks, which will in turn set up the T-Spikes. Um, he does withdraw. Okay. So free BP. Into Dinky, which is the Iron Hands. Okay. Interesting. Alright, you're going hard attack boost. That <laughs> does absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, we could see a fire punch. We could see a drain punch. Um, I don't switch into this well, actually. I don't switch into this well. Unfortunately, I do not switch into this well. Ew. I don't really want to give up Bernadette. I guess we'll go Cilium. We'll get a little silly on him. We'll get a little silly on him. We'll see what we got going on here. Goes for Drain. Yikes. That does a lot. By golly, does that do a lot, you know? Um, I can just throw off an Earth Power. I can just straight up throw off an Earth Power. However... I think Gleam is the play here. I think I'm Gleaming. Oh, he stays in. Wow. Okay, so we get a little bit more chip off on that guy. He's just gonna drain again. I should have Earth Powered. That's on me. Shouldn't be over predicting. Um, goes down to hands. Right. But um. Um, Roaring Moon Terror Blast doesn't actually kill that guy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go Fluttermane. We're gonna go right into Fluttermane. Get our speed boost. And I'm gonna click Moonblast. Goes into big, which is Dunsparce. Nice. Okay, we do about a quarter there. He's lefties. Um, so I'm going to sub in front of this in case he wants to um, glare me. Which would not be cool. Show me that glare. Nice. Okay, dude, now we start boosting. You know what, dude? It's time. It's time. It's time. Let's go. 
Um, if he only has... Depending on what he has, uh, he might not be able to break our sub. Please be special. Bro, just be special. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do, baby. Just be special. He does have Shadow Ball. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Alright, let's get the plus two, plus two. Let's get the plus two, plus two. Uh, I just, uh, we're just gonna continue being calm. Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball's only doing 15. Shadow Ball's only doing 15. Our sub does fade, but we can get another one. Our sub does fade, but we can easily get another one. And then, uh... Yeah. I wonder, does he... Oh, he stays in again. Okay. Also, I don't know why I got out of the way to make sure I've only clicked two calm mines, but I just stayed out of the way. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> um, I've only clicked two calm mines, so I'll get one more. We are at plus three, plus three. Now, Shadow Ball has a chance to not even break our sub. Now we get one more sub. Now we get one more little sub. Just one more little subby boy. Nice. And now we Moonblast. He does live, but it would be very cool if this simply did not break our sub. Okay. Okay, 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 but we Moonblast once again. Moonblast, real smooth. Dunsparce goes down to Flutter. So, real quick, uh, we would need 36 HP to make a sub. We need 36 HP to make a sub, right? Because 25% would put us on 36 HP. Do I have one 36 HP? I don't know. I don't think I do. But we're faster than everything. He does go Cinderace. Okay, we should have enough for this sub. So let's see if he goes for Sucker. Do we see a Sucker Punch? Perfect. That's amazing. Okay. That's absolutely amazing. Let's fucking go, dude. Uh, yeah, we just Shadow Ball. He didn't, um, he didn't change types either, so I guess he's fucking Blaze. I guess he's fucking Blaze, boys. Oh, because it failed, it didn't, um, uh-oh. I might have goofed, boys. I might have goofed. I've goofed. Oh no. Oh no. Shit, man. 
Okay, that's three suckers. That's three suckers. That's three suckers. Fuck. <laughs> um... It's four suckers. That's four suckers, dude. I'm so scared. Do I go for it again? I'm just gonna click it. Okay, he got me. I'm not... We've discussed this isn't my best thing. It's the Sucker Punch games. Not... Not my best, you know? So, now we can go into, um... I guess we can go Raw XD. There should be a speed tie. So, Flutter went down to Cinder. Damn, I should have Moonblasted. That was pretty dumb of me, huh? But I am just going to Terra and, uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna drop to Terra. Because he is... Actually, I don't know what he'd click here. I don't want to take super effective U-turn. We do win the speed tie. Uh... Okay, if he goes Glamora here, I'm going to assume he is Sash. Yeah, if he goes Glamora, I'm going to assume he's Sash for sure. Primal Rage comes out, which is this boy. He's going to activate his boost. Speed heightened. Okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um... So Ice Spinner could come off here. That would make sense. I guess we just go Heart Scizor. I guess we just go Heart Scizor. Damn, I wish I'd played Fluttermane better, dude. Really, really started goofing there on the end, you know? Oh lord, oh, oh lord, he bulking up. Oh jeez, he bulking. This man is fucking Macaulay Bulkin right now. Um, Scizor versus... Um, Scizor versus Great Tusk. At plus one, plus one. Um, Aerial Ace does the most. Do we live? He only has a 31% chance to okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna aerial ace. Oh, did he turn into a steel type? He's definitely gonna be a steel type. Yep. Damn dude, I got fucking I got a little carried away, huh? Yeah, because he's just gonna earthquake me. So he's not even gonna drop his boot. Yeah. That's a yikes, dude. I forgot. I forgot that was a thing. Um, fuck, man. I think I'm just gonna lose to this, actually. Um, yeah, I guess this guy isn't isn't doing much anymore. So we'll sacrifice. We'll sacrifice and pray. You know. He got the speed boost, right? Which means he doesn't have that much attack. Yeah. Um. I don't know. We're gonna hope he doesn't have, you know. Let's see if I can burn this man. He's so big. Yeah, he just wins, dude. I can't. I can't do anything. Wow. Damn, bro, if I could just fucking... If I could get a Sucker Punch game right... And he... I should have known... When it didn't, um... 
I should have known when it didn't change types. I should have moonblasted knowing the dark type move was coming, but I thought it I thought he was just uh you know. Yeah, I thought he was just fucking uh Blaze, which some people do run for like Source Dance sets, you know. Damn dude, GG's to Hayes, he's fucking I'm getting body bagged, you know? We got a 6-0 last week and then this week we're getting fucking <laughs> We're getting blown back. This has been a kind of an emotional roller coaster of a battle, you know? I was get I was just boosting up. I was boosting up like a motherfucker. <laughs> Damn dude, that's tough. These man, I tell you what, Gen 9 a fucking a turn can swing a battle. I tell you what, it can swing a freaking battle, you know? Uh like and subscribe and do all that bullshit. Check out Hayes as well as all the other coaches down below, but especially Hayes after that performance. Good golly. But, uh, yeah, see y'all next time. All right, bonus track. Let's do it. So, you may have seen on Twitter, I went to my very first death sh death metal, death, what, uh, death core, whatever you want to want. All the, all the big scary words, you know, the death and the core and the, the heavy and all the, all the good ones, you know? Also, my glasses are fogging up a little bit. I just got out the shower. But, um, normally, you know, I'm more of a, emo kind of guy. I like some nice metalcore. I like some nice uh, Midwest emo. You know, I like some uh, pop punk, some stuff like that. But I do like heavier stuff too. Um, this was this was my first actual. Every band is a fucking, you know, death metal, uh, deathcore, whatever the fuck band. And it's funny, you you kind of notice things. I noticed that the heavier the genre is the nicer the people are once you're there. Like, I went to a pop punk show not too long ago, and everyone there was so fucking rude. Is it just because, like, if you're a pop punk fan, you just got your feelings hurt that day, you know? So you, like, need to, like... You need to tell someone how your day was. You know, you need to, like, really... You need to really stick it to somebody and let them know what happened to you, you know? But the heavier the bands, the nicer the crowd is, for sure. That's definitely something I've noticed over the years, and it was confirmed today at the heaviest show I've ever been to, right? So, also, there's a thing with band logos. The heavier the band logo is, the more illegible it needs to be. You know, like, they do those, like, the the death metal band's logos where it looks like it looks like a vinyl seat in a hot car after 20 years, you know, where it's just, it's just cracked, and it's barely legible. It's written in, like... A font that doesn't even fucking exist on, you know, Microsoft Word. You know, it's like a, it's a very, oops, let me just knock my entire fucking desk over, Jesus. It's a very long, like a, like a vertical text, and it's real chopped up, like it's really scratchy. It looks like it was written, it, it always looks like it was written on a chalkboard with a nail, you know, but the more illegible and grotesque the, uh, the logo is for a band, the heavier they will be as well. It's kind of like, you know, there's that old trope, maybe it's just a southern thing, but there's an old trope, I know it's been in like a, they made a joke about it in like some commercials and stuff, but how the more ridiculous the sign is for the barbecue place, the better the barbecue will be, that's what they say at least. Look, I don't, look, I'm in Texas, maybe that's, maybe this is a local reference and you guys are like, what the fuck are you talking about, but there's like a, it's like a trope that like, Whatever, because, you know, the you'll drive by a place, and it'll be, like, a pig, and it'll be, like, fucking Piggy's Barbecue or whatever. But if the pig is wearing sunglasses, that's how you know. If the pig is wearing sunglasses and a cowboy hat, it's over. Actually, that's kind of how this channel goes, too. If I'm wearing sunglasses and a cowboy hat, you know it's going to be a silly fucking time, boys. But if the pig's wearing a hat and sunglasses, you know it's going to be a great time. If he's got, like, like a chain on and like a cane maybe you know it's like the the more ridiculous the more accessories the pig on the sign has on the better the barbecue is going to be same thing applies with uh with, with metal and shit the more illegible the band logo the heavier the more wild the wackier they're going to be now it was a good show i liked all the bands um i definitely had a few songs that i liked more than others it's also like a it's also like an experience going to a show like this, you know? It's like feeling the the vibe, like the everyone's energy, everyone's just headbanging at the same time. And then the fuck feeling the bass in your body is amazing. 
it, it makes me want to do drugs, dude. You feel that much bass in your body? I'm like, dude, I'm three conversations away from fucking doing Molly right now. You know? Like, I remember at one point, I had finished my beer. I would, look, dude, I'm a simple guy. Okay? I'm a simple guy. I don't mean simple like... I put my rocking chair towards the west and watch a sunset. I mean simple like Lenny Smalls. Like, if I don't get to tend to some rabbits, I'm going to strangle a lady. Simple. You know? <laughs> uh, that's funny. But uh, I was drinking PBR. I was drinking PBR Tall Boys, dude. Also, this was on a Thursday, so I just got off work. I was fucking exhausted, and I may or may not have had a Red Bull and vodka road beer on the way there. That's just what... Dude, sometimes, sometimes you got to do it. You know? Sometimes you got to fucking... You gotta get right before you get to the show. You gotta be in the. You gotta come correct if you're gonna go to a death metal show. You know, so I get there. I have my drink on the way. I have a couple PBRs, and then my friend's brother, who I guess is now my friend too, he bought me a beer in a cup. Right, standard like an adult. You know, uh, got real classy all of a sudden. You know, had my pinky out and shit. But uh, I had this. I finished it, and I had this empty cup, and I could feel the bass echoing inside of the cup. And I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, I was like, I was like, I want to do drugs now. This, if I can just have this cup and feel bass inside of it, imagine I do enough drugs, I'll become the cup, dude. I'll be a cup. I don't give a fuck. I'll cosplay as a cup right now, dude. I'll be a fucking cuphead, you know? But it's insane being, like, it's, it's kind of a small venue. So I brought earplugs and stuff, but we didn't really get that close. But being in, like, the back next to the, I was like, I had, like, one arm on the bar, you know, had, easy ordering drink access close to the restrooms because once that seal's broken you're gonna have to hit that restroom nine fucking times but it's really nice man it's like an experience getting to feel the energy and the music in your bones it just is awesome even if you don't necessarily like even if that's not your favorite kind of music it does feel fucking awesome to be a part of you know it was like an experience my friend was telling me he was like he wanted me to go to this show specifically because the lineup was so good so if like if you were gonna go to one this will be the one. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disappoint, dude. It was a local band, who I forget, and then it was Pale Face Swiss, who obviously is a Swiss band, which is hilarious because, look, I can't do the Swiss accent. Maybe I'll give it a, I'll give it a try. But they would be screaming the most hardcore death metal shit, and then their voices are Swiss, so they have that like the accent. It's so funny. I can't even. I wanna, I wanna do it, but I can't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's it's better to not do it and ruin it, you know? But, so Pale Face Swiss played. They were cool. I have a couple songs, definitely. They kind of had the same energy of, like, a uh, electric cowboy kind of stuff. You know, a lot of a lot of fist pumping, a lot of jumping around, shit like that. It was awesome. But the next band was called uh, Angel Maker, which, you know, not as, not as brutal as some of them I've heard, you know? But uh, they were, like, a more, like, a technical, a lot of double pedal, like, just constantly in the back which i like that kind of stuff i was always a big fan of like trivia and lamb of god and stuff like that so you get some fucking double pedal going you get some bass drops going i'm in there dude so uh pale face angel maker and then the the headlining band was called body snatcher which is i mean that's about as silly as you can get as far as a metalcore a death metal band name goes body snatcher dude they're snatching bodies now you fucking getting snatched up dude I was already in Deep Ellum in Dallas, which is kind of known for people getting snatched up occasionally. Maybe they should have played in Fort Worth or something, you know? But it was funny to me because the Angel Maker band, so Pale Face was Swiss, Angel Maker was Canadian, so then they're doing death metal fucking heavy screams. Not a single not a single word was sung the whole night. No, none of the four bands had a singer. They all just had screamers. One band had two guys on two vocalists i was like oh one guy will sing nope two screamers dude they had two i was like what the fuck <laughs> how many guys you got what in the scary kids scary kids is going on up there why you got fucking nine people on stage dude one guy doesn't even play an instrument he's just headbanging the whole time you know he goes up there presses one note on the keyboard and then just headbangs pretty funny stuff but uh the closing band body snatcher the dude was being so silly on stage i was like this is the perfect concert for me to have gone i was like my friend knew he knew exactly what he was doing. This is so silly. He kept, you know, there'll be like, a lot of people will be on stage and be like, all right, motherfuckers, let's go. He was like, all right, you stinkers, let's do a circle pit. Like he was being so silly on purpose. And then just the most brutal breakdowns and screams the entire time. It was so funny. Um, 
I liked it a lot. It was definitely an experience. And uh, it ended up being one of those things where you just end up like making friends with all the people standing around you. Like we stepped outside for a second and I saw a dude that was in front of me. And uh, a guy came out of the mosh pit, which by the way, the mosh pit was insane. Before the bands even started playing, a guy climbed a pole and fell and hit his head before the bands even started playing. And we could feel the vibration of his head hitting the concrete in our feet from like 20 feet away. So I was like, that guy died, dude. Somebody's going to, Angel Maker better make this guy an angel before the Lord snatches his body. You know what I mean? Or his face is going to be real pale real quick. I didn't even rehearse that. That's just, bro, that's just fucking me, dude. That's just fucking me, dude. <laughs> but I saw this dude. He's in front of me. And a guy comes out of the mosh pit. And he's fuck. He came in too hot. He didn't say excuse me. He didn't say sorry. When you're when I'm, I always feel so bad squeezing between people. I try to sneak in a excuse me and an I'm sorry. As I'm walking through, I do an excuse me. As I pass them, I hit them with a sorry. You gotta go too, dude. You gotta go too. It feels rude to just be slinking through people. But this dude, not an excuse me, not a sorry. He didn't even do the where you kind of lead with your hand and kind of work your way through the crowd. He just fucking came through and just was just shouldering people. Which, what the fuck, man? I get it, we're at a death metal show, but I just talked about how nice everyone was, you know? This is the one guy. And then, uh, it was funny, the dude in front of me, this big old jack dude, he just fucking, he gets shoulder checked by the rude guy, and then he just pushes him, but he was so much bigger than the guy, he didn't have to, like, really put his arm, he didn't have to, like, put any effort into it, he went, like, <laughs> like, he fucking, <laughs> like, he was, dipped his hand in water, and then, th like, kind of, did that to it. He literally, dude, with like only his fingers pushed him and the guy like went flying, you know? It was so fucking funny. And I see that dude outside and I was like, hey brother, I gotta tell you, that shit was funny. Maybe that's my, I, I have to tell people, if they if they make me laugh, I have to tell them. You know what I mean? That's probably my own like need for validation that I'm projecting onto people. But like, I need, <laughs> I, if someone does something silly, and especially if they're not doing it as a, it's a, it wasn't like a grand gesture. It was just someone in passing. He just pushed him, you know, with his fucking fingers. He did the, he did one inch punch, but as a push. But I saw that dude outside. I was like, bro, that shit was hilarious. And he was like, oh, I wasn't trying to be rude. You know, blah, blah, blah. I was fucking, he just, he came in hot and blah, blah. I was like, no, no, no. I'm not even like saying what the fuck are you doing? I was like, dude, I was behind you. I was taking a drink. I almost did a spit take laughing at how effortlessly you pushed that guy. And then of course. The guy was in a band and tried to get me to buy one of his t-shirts, and I was like, all right, I shouldn't have said anything to a stranger ever. Immediately, I'm fucking going back to my room and never speaking to anyone for six more days. But, you know, that's what you got to do sometimes. So, that's going to be the bonus track. This has been uh, Emo Adult's first Deathcore show, and, uh, you know, hope you enjoy. See you next time. <laughs>